With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Thursday, May 5th, 2016. President Obama assured the city of Flint yesterday that clean water is a part of the basic government responsibility and told the gathered crowd that he's got your back. Roberto Acosta of the Flint Journal reports that local U.S. Representatives Dan Kildy, Debbie Stabenow, Governor Rick Snyder, and Mayor Karen Reaver addressed the crowd of over 1,100 people at Flint Northwestern High School yesterday. Of the speeches leading up to the president's remarks, Governor Snyder's speech was most notably met with gales of boos from the crowd. Snyder told the crowd that he understood why they were angry and frustrated and once again offered his apologies, then spoke on the plans that are moving forward to help the city of Flint. President Obama said that the water situation should not have happened in the first place, assured the crowd that he did not believe that anyone consciously wanted to hurt the people of Flint, and noted that he is quite serious about making sure the federal government is living up to its obligations to its citizens. In an apparent sign of solidarity, during his speech, the president hoisted a glass of purportedly Flint water from a filtered tap and drank the water to clear up a dry throat. In telling the people of Flint that clean water is a basic responsibility of the government, the president made a vow to the residents of Flint that every drop of water in the city flowing to Flint homes would be safe. Mike Glasgow, Flint's utilities director, who was accused of tampering with evidence in connection to the water crisis, has accepted a plea deal with prosecutors. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that Glasgow accepted a plea deal, admitting to filing false information about lead in Flint water and agreeing to cooperate in other prosecutions related to the water situation. Glasgow has already provided testimony stating that he was told by two Michigan DEQ regulators to remove selected test results that would have skewed the overall water test results. Attorneys for Mike Prisby and Mark Krieger declined to comment on Glasgow becoming an asset to the prosecution. Prisby and Krieger, both with the Michigan Department of Environmental Equality, are the two men charged last month along with Glasgow as the first in an apparently long list of names in connection with the Flint water crisis. Donald Trump is now the presumptive Republican nominee for president for the November general election. Ted Cruz and John Kasich both have announced that they are suspending their campaigns after recent losses to the self-proclaimed billionaire in key states. A federal judge said on Wednesday that he may order Hillary Clinton to testify under oath about whether she used a private email server while she was Secretary of State. The Associated Press reports that U.S. District Court Judge Emmett Sullivan signed an order allowing legal advocacy group Judicial Watch to question multiple current and former State Department staffers about the creation and the purpose of the email system. The questioning of former staffers raises the possibility that Mrs. Clinton could be ordered to testify in the midst of the presidential race. Clinton campaign spokesman Brian Fallon holds that Clinton will cooperate with any investigation and suggested that the lawsuits in question are politically motivated, while Judge Sullivan questions whether Mrs. Clinton used her private servers to evade public records disclosure and the FBI, State Department, and U.S. intelligence agencies continue to investigate the content sent through her private email server to see how many other classified documents were sent through the unsecured server. Security researchers recently discovered that over 272 million individual email accounts have been compromised. AndroidAuthority.com reports that the breach mainly affects users of Russia's popular Mail.ru service. However, some 100 million Hotmail, Yahoo, and Gmail users have been exposed as well. According to Alex Holden, Chief Information Security Officer at Hold Security, The only reason that this even came to light was because a young Russian so-called hacker was found bragging about his accomplishments in an unnamed online forum where he was allegedly selling some 1.17 billion unique records that included usernames and passwords to the various accounts for around a buck apiece. Hold Security has not disclosed how this data was collected. However, they began informing affected companies about the breach 11 days ago. And finally, Jerry Brown, governor of California, signed into law a site of bills that would raise the legal smoking age limit from 18 to 21. The Los Angeles Times reports that along with the age increase, Governor Brown expanded no smoking areas at public schools and restricts the use of electronic cigarettes in public places. Brown's signature makes California the second state in the nation to raise the tobacco age to 21 following Hawaii. However, under pressure from legislators, the bill was changed to exempt active military personnel. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.